Okay. okay, so this video is on constraint satisfaction problem in artificial intelligence problem number two. Okay, so suppose you have to select activities for six preschool students for a talent show. The available categories are painting, music, and storytelling. And there are a few rules you have to follow. Okay, so those are the rules. Now you have to like make a CSP. So formulate this problem as a CSP. Now first you just gonna like take the variables. So the variables will be the preschool students. So there are six students. So six variables. So S1, S2, S3, S4, and S5. And for the domains, they're gonna be the categories. So painting, music, and storytelling. So the domains are going to be painting, music and storytelling. Now you have to make the constraints. So basically you have to use the rules. So student two wants music or storytelling. So basically you just wanna write constraints. Then student two equals music or storytelling. So yeah, that, then the same one is student one and four want to perform the same activity. So student one has to equal student four. Then student three and four want to perform different activities. So they can't have the same activities. So student three can be equal to student four. Then student six does not like storytelling. So student six cannot be equals to storytelling so he can be either like p or m so painting or music you can write that or just like write this way okay i'm gonna show you so student six can be like p and m but he can be like storytelling okay so this is the this is the constraints oh right one more Student one is asking to be in painting or music. So student one can be equal to paint or music. Okay, now you have to make a constraint graph. So the way you do that is you, you just take the variables and you make a graph out of them. So S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6, so all the students. And you're just gonna like make nodes out of them. And you're just gonna like use the constraints. So student one kind of equals uh, M and S, so music or storytelling. So this is basically like a domain based. So this is basically going to be a self loop here. Now S1 can be equals S4. So S1 and S4, you're just gonna connect this and you're gonna like put a line in between them cause, oh wait, no, nah. you're just gonna like, you, you, don't need, you don't need a line cause they can be equal. Okay, so S3 doesn't equal S4. So you're just gonna put a line in between them and you're just gonna like cut it in between cause they can't be the same value. Now S6 can be equals S, S storytelling or basically like S6 equals painting and music. So this is going to be like a self loop and S1 is going to be a self loop as well because you know, it's domain based. Okay, so constraint graph done. Now you're going to like make the backtracking algorithm. So what you want to do is like you're going to like make a table for the students. So S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, and S6. And this is gonna like create tables for each of them. Now, once you're done with this, you will have to initialize them with the values that are available. So for S1, so S1 can be equals S4. So since you can use like all three of these domains, so you're just gonna like put P, M, and S on S1. And same, same thing for S4, P, M, and S. And S3, S1 equals S4 done. So S3 doesn't equal S4. So 
well, since there's no like initializing, you're just gonna like, there's no constraint for the domains. You're just gonna like initialize them with PMNS. For S6, however, you can't use this, just use PNM. So S6 will be PNM. S5 will be PMNS. And S2 has to be MNS, so MNS. Now you're going to use the minimum remaining value here first. So S2 has the like lowest domain, so MNS only. So S2 equals M. I'm just gonna like pick M first. So put M here. Since it's not really like connected with any other variables, you don't have to like change anything else here. Okay, so now S2 is done. You're gonna like go to the minimum remaining value again. So S6 has two variables. So I'm just gonna assign S6 to a P. So P here. Now again, this thing does not have any connection with the other students. So I'm just gonna like just keep P here. Now I'm just gonna like start with S1 now. So S1 equals P. Now S1 has to equal S4. So if I choose P here, I'm gonna have to choose P here as well. Okay, so I can't really choose S here because S is not applicable because of the constraints. So I'm just gonna like cut this thing. So only P and M, okay, so P and P for here. Now, the minimum remaining value is, uh, the next value is like S3, so I'm just gonna like choose S3 here. So S3, I'm gonna take P. Now S3 can't be equal to S4, since we already have P here, this thing, this thing won't work. So you're just gonna like cross this off and then go to the previous step, just backtrack it basically. Now you're just gonna write this thing here in this step, so S1 equals, instead of taking P, you're gonna take M. Okay, so take M here. Now S4 will also be changed to M here. Okay, now I can take S3 now, and basically like, I can choose whatever value I have. Okay, so I, I'm just gonna like choose P now, because like S3 can be equal to S4, and since this thing's already M, I can't really, I can't really use M. I can use S if I want, but I'm just gonna go with P. Okay, so this one's done, this one's done, this one's done. S5's left. I don't think I put S4 here, so I'm just gonna like put S4 as M because like I already chose it here. And S5 will be P because there's no, like there's no, constraint for it. So I can just choose whatever value I want. I can choose like PM or S, okay. So this is done basically. So all together, all the values. So S1 has M, S2 has M, S3 has P, S4 has M, S5 has P, and S6 has P. So if you can like check the constraints out and they're, they're not gonna like constrain with each other. So this thing's like, this thing's right. So this is basically the answer. You can do it in other ways if you want, but this is just one way to do it.